Hi everybody, I wanted to show you a, a good Flexbox example that might help you with your homework assignment this week, um, which covers Flexboxes. Uh, this is also part of Chapter 12. So um, we're going to take a good look at this, but I want you to see um, what, what happens when I reduce the width on this. It's very um, relative. I wouldn't call it totally responsive because when we get to the mobile side, you see that we have three columns, which is never a good play on smaller devices. Um, but you can see the minimization of this will not only uh, shrink, but grow as we reduce and widen. But notice how the footer stays the same and the header stays the same, but the article itself, that is what is going to be um, controlled by the Flexbox. So it's sort of a flexible layout. All right, so inside here, there's plenty of comments for you. Um, I'm going to go through them together with you uh, and talk about what this means. Now, in the big scope of things, we're learning responsive design. This is how the book is starting to match the responsive part of this course. And there's starting to be an interlock because the fact is we don't have media queries on this, and we should. Uh, just because that the two asides should not be um, in a mobile layout. So when we look at this, um, the flex flow property, that's line 13 here. Um, that can only apply to the parent container. And that's why when we were doing responsive design, the idea is to have a nice wrap. So it has one, two values, one for the direction and the other for the wrap itself, whether we want to wrap code or not wrap code. Now the individual values of this um, can be seen in the chapter uh, 12 book code, which I also have a video going over. Um, so if you're watching this one first, you want to do the homework first, that's fine. Uh, this is one of the more common uh, Flexbox layouts. So um, when we look at this, um, this of course is the display. Now the Flex wrapper itself is going to contain all our semantic elements. It's got the header, it's got the article, and then two asides. Now of course you'll notice visually that the sides are left um, and right, and the article's in the middle footers at the bottom, headers at the top. Now what's important about this is that there's an ordering system inside a Flexbox container, but it has to be the Flex wrapper here. You can call it whatever you like, but the fact is when you apply the Flex layout to the display property, that means that that's the container for the Flexbox grid. So you can apply Flex to smaller grids as well, you know, grids with inside a responsive design. So that's a very important thing. We'll get to the order in a second because I know it's kind of exciting and very different. Um, in this case, our wrapper has no fixed pixel width. Nowhere do you see width 960, nothing like that. And that's because everything's relative. Um, you'll notice it when we did reduce it the, and decrease the, the width of the browser, there was a, a definitely responsive feel to that. So we have text line center, margin uh, top and bottom of 10 pixels and, and, and left and right auto. This is the more appropriate of the two, uh, the width, because having it automatic gives it an even more responsive feel. Now, into more things that you may not have known. The setting below affects all the semantic box items. That's article, header, sides, footer. And you'll notice the homework assignment this week actually has a footer, header, etc. Note the asterisk, because that means that all parent elements, but not grandchildren, okay? Um, gives them equal grow and shrink. That's what this is. Okay, so this is the grow, this is the shrink, and this is going to take a little bit of time to get to get used to. Um, the greater than sign, of course, means that it should only affect the immediate child and nothing below it. So p tags inside the header or h1 tags are not affected. But again, uh, grow and shrink. Grow and shrink. That's how we're going to flex. So we've already got the flex wrapper with our our semantics, now we also have the elements below. So we're controlling those top level elements. Now this is all background color, no big deal, but now we get into the nitty gritty and you'll notice there's only six lines of code here. So that's why it's so simple. Don't be fooled by the line numbers here. We've reduced the amount of code significantly by using a flex layout. Um, I remember when it started, people started using this like in 2012, 2013, and it was really what all the cool kids were doing. Um, so, below are the flex items that we can have fun with and do a little experimentation. Um, this, the asides are given a grow of one. Well, the article is given a grow of three. That means the article is three times wider than the aside 
columns. So let's take a look at that. Is this three times the size of these sides? Well, let's see. Will it maintain those three three times these sides? Sure does look like it. Of course, we get to a, a, an area here, and it looks like we're still there. So that's the grow uh, um, and shrink of three. Now, the, the asides themselves, this is it right here. Um, this aside, grow and shrink is one. Um, let's try a shrink of zero or auto. I'll try zero first. And that's what we can kind of play around with because it's it's just a fun thing. So this is the aside, right? And I'll go ahead and do a zero here. And now it should, it's getting thinner and thinner. So these are all ranges and levels. I can go ahead and do, uh, we can do a, a grow of three. Look at that, I have nothing, so it's zero all around. And I do zero here, that's the grow. What if I do three here? Now you see that it's it's equal. We have three, three, three equal columns all the way. And it's always equal. So you can uh, reduce the, the grow and shrink to your heart's delight, but it all stays maintained in that grid. And I think the most important thing is that when we hit refresh here, the content itself stays normal. It just wraps down. And that's because we have this right here, row wrap. We've controlled the rows, not the columns. And that's what we're controlling with our widths. And now we have a, a nice grid system. Okay, so now to the important thing. A side one, a side two, this one, two, three, and four. Well, we could easily do, you know, reverse these things. We'll do four and two, and we'll save it, and let me cancel that out and hit refresh, and now you see the footer is at two, so one, two, three, four. But we still have the same width in comparison with the grid. So that's a nice flex box example. I see this the most in box in the box model. Uh, feel free to experiment with that. Um, I do expect this homework to be done, you know, on your own instead of copying this code. But you can work with it. Uh, there's not much here to, to really steal from. It's more of a base level idea. Uh, I think you need to get used to things like wrapping and wrap reverse and, and, and some of the, the flex flow properties. That'll be in that separate movie about flex. So anyway, have fun with this. It's it's a new, new thing that's really neat. I think it's one of the coolest things about advanced CSS, as challenging as this course is. We'll be getting into grid systems in about a week, and I think you'll enjoy that as well.